Hello everybody, welcome to Marty Motoring. In this video, I'm gonna be going over all the things I don't like and what I do like about our 2016 Mazda CX-9 Signature. We've had it for about 10 months now and this car is used daily, not by me, but as you can see, I have a family. I did a video of this when we first bought it. So now I'm giving you an update on kind of a long-term review, how it is to live with. Obviously, this is not a brand new car and the CX-90 is now out, but if you're looking to buy a used or 2023 CX-9, these are things to know and be aware of, and maybe that'll help you if you're looking at buying one of these. We have the signature trim, and in 2016, you were able to get this brown Napa leather. I'm not sure what colors you can get today. Either way, let's start outside of the vehicle and we'll talk about everything. So here it is. It's got about 95,000 miles on it. Again, it's a 2016 CX-9 signature. So it's a little bit bigger than the CX-5. And we actually have some aftermarket wheels on it right now. And I have the OEM factory wheels powder coated black. I just got that done. So that might be a really nice winter wheel setup or we might just go back to those. The offset of these wheels is a little bit better, which is why I went with them and they're a little bit lighter than factory. But you don't really notice that. We had two new tires because the fronts were pretty new. We had to replace the rears because of a nail. And then we got the front windows tinted to match the rear. I always told myself when we first got this 10 months ago now that I would black out this trim and I just never got around to it. The chrome is okay. We put about 20,000 miles on this. It's almost at 100,000 miles. All we've done is oil changes and spark plugs. I just did those. Everything's holding up fairly well. One of the issues we had the clips on these wheel well arches come off and it makes the car look terrible with all these different holes. They're really hard to find to get those arches, uh, certain ones. So the front you can see is not perfectly lined up. Looks like somebody put some 3M tape because of missing clips and broken clips. Uh, the car actually came like this. This is a known defect on the earlier models. The bumper just kind of breaks and it's not really anything big. So we didn't really deal with it. it you don't really notice it unless you look but this one had actually come off on the road flew off on the highway clips were all broken it was like 200 dollars for a new piece so there's been some little annoyances with that just due to the design i mean overall this thing looks awesome i would say it's more like an all-wheel drive wagon with front wheel drive bias uh rather than an suv it's kind of shaped and low like a wagon um, and that's what makes it handle so well. And with the 2.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine, it actually has some good power. It feels like a V6 that kind of, the power isn't as linear because it's turbo. So it, it just kind of pushes you and goes. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it does feel pretty good. Again, back here, you have a lot of the chrome. Uh, I don't love it. Um, so people might, I'd love to have that blacked out. I just haven't had the time or energy. This car is used every day, so it's not always available for me to modify, which is probably a good thing. So the con so far in the exterior is cracked bumper, wheel arches coming off, and OEM wheels just kind of chipping paint. That's actually what happened, is, which is why I got them powder coated and we got a, another set that's a little cleaner. Um, that was something annoying that we had to deal with. And the chrome, if you're not a chrome person, there's a lot of chrome on this but this is the signature level, so. Another thing that's kind of annoying for a car that of this price range is no hood struts. Come on, it'd be so easy to add. Just a hood prop. Engine is purring away. We're about due for an oil change on this. And yeah, everything under here so far, so good. No coolant leaks, no cracked heads. That seemed to be an issue for some people, but I mean, this thing has 100,000 miles on it and it's been good. I was told we needed a brown interior, so this was the one we went with. And we got this for a really good price. I did a video on that, which I'll link here when we first got it. But this is a 10 month review. As you can see, this is used daily and needs cleaned weekly. The leather is holding up really good inside. I mean, this car is seven years old now and 100,000 miles, everything still works really well. Here in the very dirty interior, we have some smart liners, which has really helped 
uh, taking out and cleaning those are way easier than the carpet that came with it. I did get this trim stuff off eBay that just goes over and kind of covers up some of the scratches that were on the piano black. Same thing with the window switches. Now this wood is kind of annoying if you're a taller person, you kind of hit your knee on it, but you do get used to it after a while. It's just one of those things you learn to live with. But if you go like this when you drive, it kind of happens. If you rest your foot on the fake dead pedal, you're not gonna hit that. Like if you just put your leg there. Same thing with over here. If you're a little taller, I'm 6'1", you do hit your knees. We do also have a steering wheel cover that kind of matches the brown. Gives a little bit thicker feel. Let's start this before we move to the rear because it is hot and we need some AC. AC blows nice and cold. Heated seats work fine. I do love the dial system here, like how this works and selects and uh, the volume. Everything here works great. And one thing that doesn't really always work great is the Mazda Connects. It came with version 59, which is the older software. So I updated it to 70, which allows you to do Apple CarPlay with some a little few other mods I'll show you in a second and that's what we updated to. And now I'm running version 74, which is the latest and greatest, but on the heads up display, but I don't know, you can't really see the heads up display from where I'm sitting, but it takes away the tachometer view, which is kind of annoying. Uh, it only shows you miles per hour and navigation, but if you're using CarPlay for navigation, you don't see it on there anyways. So, you know, it, it's okay. This does work a lot faster and smoother. So I'll show you how this looks with CarPlay. So here is the screen with CarPlay. It's pretty good quality. And uh, this is just Apple CarPlay, you know. The Bose system sounds really good in this car. The maps are nice and clear and everything works well in that regard. So like I said, the stereo sounds really good. One other thing I forgot to mention is these keys are expensive to replace. Um, we had a one loss that was in the street for some reason <laughs> and somebody ran it over and it crushed it. So we had to get a new key cut and I got a new key fob. Altogether, it was like 200 bucks to get this replaced. So. Yeah, this, it's just, you gotta have this. It is keyless entry, you know, push start and all that. Uh, but having one key kind of sucks. So that was another thing we had to replace. Then I also installed the CarPlay hub, which requires you to take this apart and run two wires down. And here's the new hub with the little phone indication for CarPlay. We updated the SD card for the newest navigation. So that was like 35 bucks. And this whole kit was like a hundred or something like that. Sometimes it'll stop working, but for the most part it works okay. And it's nice just to have Android Auto and CarPlay and everything like that in this vehicle. There are only two memory seat settings, which is still really nice. I use number two and the seats are pretty comfortable, but after like three hours, you start to get kind of uncomfortable. They're kind of narrow for somebody a little bit wider like me, but overall they're okay. Back here is where this vehicle really shines, I think. We have a car seat and we still have room for a passenger up front to sit comfortably. You can see this, this seat's a little farther forward than mine, my seating position. These seats fold flat and they also recline and everything like that. So that's super nice. Back here has stayed in really good condition despite having a kid. She's 10 months now, almost 11, but I'm sure as time goes on, it might get worse. So, <laughs> but the, the leather seems to be holding up well. It's pretty comfortable for me to sit as well. We, we slide this all the way back and we only use this row. We don't use the third row. We just have it folded and use it as a trunk. And it's pretty nice how these have a cutout for your legs. So that's comfortable. Another thing I should mention is gas mileage. This thing gets about 20 to 21 combined. It's not great. We usually use 87 because you can with this. That system is designed to be able to run 87 at 220 horsepower. Or if you put 93, you can get 250 horsepower. We use a mix of Sonoco's gas, Sam's Club's gas, as well as some Sheets gas if we have to. We haven't had any problems with, uh, back here. I mean. Everything's working pretty good. I did just recently do some LED uh, reverse lights. We kind of have a little tote and some kid stuff and the smart liner as well. Everything works really good back here. We do have this, which I just recently found so we can plug in stuff and that stays on when the car's off. This three row SUV with a very small three row feels good to drive and is pretty powerful. And after 10 months, I mean, we still really like it. It's our go-to family car. We just took a three and a half to four hour, five hours of traffic trip with this. And we had it filled with a baby stroller. We had my electric scooter, our suitcases, and all three of us. And it did well. It did fine. It was comfortable. Uh, the sound system was great for music on the road trip. Honestly, no complaints. I think we got there and back 
on just one tank of gas. So it really wasn't that costly and it was comfortable, sleek, it's sporty, it's easy to drive. This thing drives like a little sports wagon. So there's really no complaints there. Those are just kind of the pros and cons, things to look out for. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, this thing has been pretty solid and reliable. Engine's good, transmission's good. Fingers crossed this will be a nice family vehicle for years to come. So if you found this video helpful, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Hit subscribe to follow along with more videos. Drop in the comments, what do you think of the CX-9? Is this a good value as a used car now that the CX-90 is coming out? I wanna say thanks for watching and as always, Keep those wheels turning. So long, farewell.